All right, class, welcome to lab two, groundwater karst features. In this lab, we're gonna be looking at and understanding natural resources here in the hill country. Um, class is taught at Palo Alto College, we're in San Antonio. Maybe you're not here, but we are, so we want to teach you a little bit about our region, okay? Here we work, we play, we pollute, directly above what's known as the Edwards Aquifer. We're learning this in our class this semester. In this lab, we're gonna be looking at some of the springs that are found throughout the artesian zone. We'll learn about discharge gauges. In lab one, we learned about stream level gauges. These gauges are similar where they measure the amount of water coming out of the ground at a specific spring, okay? Please follow all instructions in the lab carefully. If you have any questions or comments, uh, go to Canvas and, and post it in the general help or email me and uh, we'll try to help you. Cool. So, just like in the last lab, let's go to this website, edwardsaquifer.net. You can drag and drop it into a new tab or just click on it and it will pull up a website that talks all about the Edwards Aquifer. This graphic look should, familiar, should look familiar to you. To again, put it directly in my lecture slides. PowerPoint, hopefully you're looking at and studying and using on the tests, cool. All right, so here in Bear County in San Antonio, we are lucky enough to have all four zones. Okay. So in the lab, go back, I would like for you to give me a brief description of all four zones, at least four or more sentences per zone. So it should be a total, if there's four zones, times four, at least 16 total sentences. More is better. If you only write four sentences, that better be Shakespeare. You better have summarized the zones perfectly in each of those four sentences. Um, if not, write a little more. Five, six, seven sentences can't hurt. More is always better, okay? Um, Go back to the website. If you want to find out some detailed information about the Edwards Aquifer Zones, click on the introduction link. It introduces you to all of the zones, the contributing zone, the recharge zone, right? Transition zone, artesian zone. There are hundreds of sentences per zone. You should be able to summarize this in your own words easily. Now we go back to the home page of the website. If you'll scroll down, you'll see on the bottom right, there are seven videos that focus on springs. Comal, San Marcos, Barton, San Pedro, San Felipe, San Antonio, Las Moras. Okay? Pick one of those seven. Click on them, like Barton Springs. It'll take you to a web page that has a short video. This one's only less than four minutes. Watch the video and also browse through and read all of this awesome, wonderful information about each of the springs, okay? I want you to pick five interesting facts and write at least three or more sentences per fact, okay, about that spring. Talk about why you found that fact interesting, what is it about the fact that makes it a fact, and give me some little more information on it that you uh, discovered, why you thought that was cool, okay? So that's at least three sentences times five facts. I should see at least the bare minimum 15 sentences. Now, regardless of which spring you watched your video on and talked about the facts, let's focus on one, the Comal Springs. So this is the discharge monitoring station reporting site for this monitoring device. So we go to this website Wait for it to load up. I should have preloaded it, right? I'm totally gonna cut this. Nope, all right, fine. All right, here we are. If you'll scroll down, hopefully you're at the Comal River at New Braunfels. There's the number. And here is the chart, discharge in cubic feet per second. Instantaneous readings, okay? You've got an x-axis, you've got a y-axis, and another blue trend line, okay? So, I would like for you to describe this chart for me and show me the chart, okay? If we go back to the lab, do like you did in the first lab, 
cut and paste, copy, snap, whatever it takes to get it into your lab document that you turn in so I can see. <clears throat> A little bit of information here. If you'll notice on your chart, it tells you the exact date and time that the reading is occurring at, so I know exactly when you're doing this lab. If you turn it in late, but tell me you did it on time, but this chart is from after the due date, I'm going to know you did the late lab, okay? Just saying. Back to the lab. Okay. Describe the blue discharge line. Is it flat? Is it wavy? If you happen to have done this lab right after a big rain event in the hill country, you will see that blue line spike way up. In fact, you can just catch it here if you look the far left of my discharge chart where it was up to 320 cubic feet per second and then went back down to its normal spring and summertime of 280 and it's slowly slowly on average going down heading toward 270 maybe even 260 over the next few weeks if we don't receive any more rain in the hill country area okay. back to the lab <clears throat> now this is the last and most important question it's worth 40 points what is this chart representing in terms of the entire hydrologic cycle, the cycle that we're learning in this module. Evaporation, condensation, precipitation, percolation, runoff and storage, and then moving back into large bodies of water to go do it all over again. Where is this aquifer in that cycle? Okay, Think about the entire cycle and where this aquifer fits. Okay include hydrologic cycle terms, not hydrologic zones, but overall hydrologic cycle terms that we are learning in this module. Okay, Tie them all in together. <clears throat> Refer to your first question where you learned about the zones. What's going on in those zones that make it part of the hydrologic cycle? Tie that entire aquifer, which includes all of those zones, into the cycle. Okay, Now, where did the water come from? Where is it evaporating from? You might have to go to Google Earth or Google Maps and zoom out of New Braunfels and look at where do you think that water might be evaporating from? Hint, large bodies of water. Where is it raining? Where is it running off? Where is it entering? And then where is it exiting? Well, it's exiting at the spring. So if you zoom in to New Braunfels at that spring and take a look at what's around it, how might the city of New Braunfels be using that water? Are they drinking it? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you should do a little bit of research on that. Um, what about water activities? Tubing, rafting, about are they powering anything? Hydroelectric power? Uh, is it a tourist attraction? Does it go through a park? What river does it feed into? And where does that river go to? So talk about where the water came from, where it's raining, where it's precipitating, percolating, and then running off. In other words, talk about the whole hydrologic cycle as it relates to this region of the earth right here in central Texas. And that's the end of the lab. Cool?